There's been an accident. Minutes, maybe seconds count. And you don't know what to do. You're helpless. Holy bird! This woman's not breathing. Someday, just as sure as I'm standing here, you're gonna come across such an accident. Will you be helpless? We're gonna play a game, a first aid quiz. The point of the quiz is to help you learn how to handle an accident situation now, before it happens. Uh, that's not gonna work. Hand me that starter. Hey, I don't think you're supposed to put that stuff on there when it's actually burning. Yeah, oh. watch it, it's dangerous. I'll, pu I'll pour it in the top. We'll get it. Keep hey, 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 help! Get it, get it out! Get it out, Tom! Get it out! Oh, oh! For most burns, large or small, the first aid treatment is pretty much the same and involves mostly common sense. Let me look at it. It's a mess. It, it's killing me. Here's question number one. It's multiple choice. Give me some water. Hurry. No, not water. Listen, we should open the blister first and let them dry out. How do you treat a burn? Drain blisters or cool with water? Your first aim for all burns is to relieve the pain. What's the best way to cool hot skin? Use cold water. Breaking the blisters could cause serious infection. Okay, okay. Is that better? A little. How's it look? Oh, it looks pretty bad. Get me some ointment out of the first aid kit and the bandages. Oh, we don't have any ointment. I'll use the butter then. Why? It's greasy. It'll prevent infection. No, look, don't use butter. Don't use butter. It makes it worse. Should you use butter on a burn? Don't use butter or use butter. Your second aim in treating burns is to prevent infection, but butter is a poor substitute for ointment. It contains salt and will cause irritation. No, don't use the butter, it's worse. Okay, just the bandages. We don't have any bandages either. Well, I gotta use something. Plastic bag, that'll keep the air off of it. Listen, I, I think you gotta let the air circulate around the arm. No, no. How do you prevent infection? Expose burn to fresh air or Keep burn away from air. Anything that keeps air off the wound will help prevent infection. Clean bandages would have been best, but, but even a plastic bag will help. Okay, look, that's pretty good. Let's get him to a doctor quick. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> the accident we have just seen was a thermal burn caused when you touch something hot. Another kind of burn, the chemical burn, is caused when certain chemicals come in contact with the skin. Okay, now I think if we leave this in just a little more... Seth, hand me the tongs. Mm -hmm. My eye! Oh, my, my eye! Diane, get the lights. Here, run the water. Wipe, here, wipe your eye. No, wipe. run the water. But the acid's going to keep on burning until we wipe it off. How do you treat a chemical burn? Rinse with water or wipe with cloth. Always wash a chemical burn with lots of water for at least 10 minutes. Otherwise, a chemical will keep on burning. You could never wipe it off. If the skin has been broken, bandage the burn as we have already seen to prevent infection. I'm sorry, but you gotta keep washing. Come on. You'll be okay. There are some accidents we've seen so many times they seem harmless like getting something caught in the throat. We gag a bit, turn red in the face, and the bone or whatever goes down. But suffocation by choking is one of the greatest causes of household fatalities. Why, what's more chicken? I can't see them. I hear them. She's got something caught in her throat. Must be a bone. <laughs> Here, give us some bread. Here, Diane, here's something else. No, I think she can cough it up first. What do you do if someone has something caught in her throat? Give her milk, help cough it up, or give her bread. A sharp object could puncture the intestine, so don't coax your victim into swallowing it by giving her milk or bread. Instead, have the victim try to cough up what is choking her. 
Well, we can't get it out. Shall I slap her back? No. Uh, help me bend her over a chair. What do you do if a victim cannot cough up the object? Slap her back right away or bend her over, then slap back? Bend the victim over a chair and slap her back forcefully. That should dislodge the object and it'll drop out. Should it not come out, get her to a hospital. Hey, help me bend her over a chair. <laughs> oh, there. Oh, it was a problem. Are you okay, Ma? Come on, sit down. Sit down. Okay. You okay? Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about poisons. The average household contains 500 toxics that we routinely use every day and never think twice about. Cleaners, paints, medicines, beauty products, all killers. One teaspoon to one glass of water and then spray plants. Tap, come here, look at this. Me too. And there's some limeade I made over there. This tastes terrible. Drug killer. Did you swallow any? Kevin, you've got to try and throw up. No, drink some water. What should you do when someone swallows poison? Make the victim throw up or make them drink water? Both answers sound right. Either get the poison out of the body by vomiting or dilute it with liquid. In fact, each remedy is right in certain situations. But how do we know which is right for a specific poison? Get the bottle, see what it says. Okay. No? Yeah, it's dangerous, but it doesn't say what to do if you swallow it. Did it hurt when you swallowed it? It'll hurt when she throws it up. But it'll hurt more if it stays in her stomach. Will poison hurt more if it stays in the stomach? No, sometimes it's safer, or yes, always more dangerous. Sometimes it is safer not to induce vomiting. Reading the label was the best idea. It will often tell you the antidote for the poison. If it doesn't, the general rule is this. The poison burned on the way down, it's also gonna burn on the way up, and it might go into the lungs. Such poison should not be vomited. This includes most household cleansers. Now, non-burning poisons, such as medicines, may be safely vomited. In both cases, the victim and the poison container should be taken to a hospital immediately. But swallowing poisons isn't the only way to harm yourself. Every year, thousands of people die at home from poisonous gas. 90% of those are killed by carbon monoxide poisoning despite repeated warnings of its dangers. No, nah, that ain't it at all. Well, give it another degree. That should do it. Okay, again, Woody. Woody. Kill it. Kill it. Hey, uh, let's forget it, huh? I already burned up half the tank. Just turn this thing over. Quit your griping. Well, at least let's get some fresh air in here. I don't feel so good. Well, it's raining too hard. What about the exhaust fume? What about it? The engine's only idling. Is carbon monoxide present in exhaust fumes? No, not enough to worry about, or yes, precautions are necessary. Though carbon monoxide is odorless, you can be sure that wherever there is combustion, there will be carbon monoxide. Don't count on your nose to warn you of poisonous gases. Hey, I don't feel good, Joe. Hey, I got a pretty bad head myself. Yeah, me too. I feel pretty strange. Well, maybe we should open up a door or something. No, I tell you, we're just tired. What are the warning signs of carbon monoxide poisoning? Drowsiness or headache? Headache and drowsiness are the two clearest signs of carbon monoxide poisoning. When these symptoms coincide with the presence of combustion, be alert. Hey, Kent, hand me that... Hey, Kent! Hey, come on, Kent! Hey, there's something the matter! Kent, come on! Come on, we gotta get out of here! Come on! 
Where would he? Oh, he stopped breathing. Maybe we should give him artificial respiration. There's no time. We got. We better get some air. What's the first step in treating carbon monoxide poisoning? Artificial respiration or get the victim the fresh air? Artificial respiration is useless while there are still fumes in the air. There's also a good chance that you, the rescuer, will be overcome. So get the fresh air in a hurry. Then start mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation and call for help. As if you can't get into enough trouble at home, first aid has even greater importance when you're far from the availability of professional help. Most of us have at some time or other stayed too long in the sun. We got hot and tired, which is normal enough. But after a while, we started to feel sick. Hey. Hey, what's the matter, man? Hey, Al. He looks like he's exhausted. Okay. Uh, he must be sick or something. Yeah, his skin is really cool. It'd be hot and dry, wouldn't it? If he had heat exhaustion? How do you recognize heat exhaustion? Hot, dry skin or cool, wet skin? This person is suffering from heat exhaustion. His body is trying to cool itself by perspiring, which is why his skin feels cool and wet. Let me give us some water. <coughs> Oh, man, he's sweating. Look at him sweat. He doesn't need any water. How do you treat heat exhaustion? Don't give water or give water. This victim's body is using up too much water. You've got to give him more to replace what evaporates. If possible, water with salt in it. I'm okay. The hiker should now recover in a few minutes, but he must be kept out of the sun for a while. If you don't recognize heat exhaustion at its early stages, it can become much worse. I won. Oh, I finally won you. Oh, come on. You've never beaten me before. I, I won. Here. No way. I'm sorry, Mona. Come on. I was way up here. What happened? I don't know. I don't know. He seems all right. Maybe he's just fainted. Feel his skin. Way too hot. That's natural. He's just dehydrated. I I'll go get some water. Bring all the water. I think he's got heat stroke. Is high skin temperature a sign of heat stroke? Yes, skin feels hot and dry, or no, hot, dry skin is natural. Heat stroke is a very serious form of heat exhaustion. The body, in trying to cool itself, has used up all its water. Therefore, the skin is hot and dry. Here. I've got to cool him off. Ride down to that last gas station and call an ambulance. Hurry! Should I get some salt pills? Just hurry! He's all right, isn't he? How do you treat a heat stroke victim? Cool him with water or give him salt pills? Heat stroke is very serious. People can die from it if they're not cooled off quickly. The best way to do this is by dousing the victim with water. He should then be taken to a hospital as soon as possible. That concludes our quiz. I'd like now to review the 15 points. Number one is that burns should immediately be cooled with water. Two, don't use butter on a burn. It causes irritation. Three, protect burns from the air. Four, chemical burns must be rinsed in water for several minutes. Five, an object caught in the throat is coughed up, not swallowed. Dislodge the object by bending the victim over and then slapping her back. Seven, some poisons should be vomited, others are diluted with water. The correct answer depends upon, eight, if it burned on the way down, 
it will burn again coming back up. Nine, any exhaust fumes can cause carbon monoxide poisoning. Symptoms are drowsiness and headache. Eleven, the first treatment for carbon monoxide poisoning is fresh air. Twelve, cool wet skin can be a symptom of heat exhaustion. The treatment is plenty of water plus salt if possible. Fourteen, high skin temperature is a sign of heat stroke. The victim should be cooled off as quickly as possible, then taken to a hospital. So, how did you do? Can you handle an accident situation? If not, take a first aid course. Spend a few hours now so that you won't be helpless when seconds count.